Hello humans, welcome back to the study of the Bible in chronological order. It is written in Genesis 6-9. These are the records of the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his time. Noah walked with God. All right, so we have a perceived problem here. In Psalm 51-5, David implies that humans are born into sin. In Psalm 53, 1-3, David states that no one is good. And in Mark 10, 18, Jesus said that no one is good except God alone. And in Romans 3, 23, Paul said that we've all sinned. We all fall short of the glory of God. So how could Noah have been declared righteous and blameless? Well, again, there are scriptural solutions. If only we would investigate. So the word righteous in this verse is the Hebrew tzaddik, which means just or lawful. And the word blameless is the Hebrew tamim, which means complete, whole, healthy, or unimpaired. So to say that Noah was righteous and blameless, it does not indicate that he was completely sinless. Now it is true that Noah was born into sin because he came from the seed of Adam. However, because righteousness meant being lawful, well, Noah would have been judged by whatever law had been made known to him at that time. However, Noah preceded the Mosaic law, so what commands had Noah been given? Well, as we will later be revealed throughout Noah's story, God commanded Noah to build the ark and to gather all the animals, to go in the ark. And so Genesis 6.22 says, Thus Noah did, according to all that God had commanded him, so he did. Therefore, Noah had been declared righteous, because he obeyed the commands he knew of at that time. Further, Noah had been complete and whole and healthy, because, as it is written, he walked with God. Noah received God's word, believed God's word, and acted according to his faith. And scripture later reveals to us that through faith, righteousness is credited to us. It says this in Gen Genesis 15, 6, Romans 4, 3, Ephesians 2, 8 to 9. So consider also the fact that David was called a man after God's own heart, right? Even though he had sinned. In fact, Proverbs 15, 9 tells us that the Lord loves the one who pursues righteousness. So, what then does it mean to be righteous? Well, to be righteous is to be right with God. But how can one be right with God? By doing what God has told us to do. And that's why Jesus said in Luke 6, 46, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, but you don't do what I tell you to do? Roman talks, uh, Paul talks about that in Romans as well, Romans 2.13. You're justified as a doer of the word. A heart that is right with God results in a life that bears fruit. Jesus talks about this. Paul talks about this. In fact, it is by love and its fruit that a person will be known as a disciple of Christ. That's what Jesus said. You, you'll be known by your fruit. Um, John talks about this. You'll know the disciple by their love. In the Old Testament, men were declared righteous when they believed God and acted on their belief through faith. Now, before Pentecost, which happened in Acts chapter 2, people pursued righteousness by keeping God's law, seeking holiness, walking humbly with God. We read about this, Micah 6, 8. Because no one can please God in our sinful fleshly state, right? that's what's written in Romans 8.8, 8, no one is completely justified by rule keeping, but by faith that enabled them to obey God. So essentially, to be righteous, we need only to live by faith. We see this in Habakkuk 2.4, Hebrews 11.6, it says it is impossible to please God apart from faith. To live by faith, we must possess belief of God's word and also trust in his word. We must believe that the Lord exists and trust in the Lord for our ultimate good. 
right? That's what Proverbs 3, 5 to 8 tells us. We need to trust in the Lord, not lean on our own understanding. Romans 8, 28, Paul says, God is going to work out all things together for our good. So God spared Noah from the flood because everyone else had chosen to live evil lives and they walked away from God. Noah was the righteous one. He was right with God. Listen, righteousness should be our goal. Now, of course, it is written that we are not saved by our works, but we are saved by our faith. It says this in Romans 3, 24 to 31, Ephesians 2, 8 to 9. However, our faith should produce fruit. But how does faith produce fruit? Well, because if we receive God's word, and we believe God's word by faith, then we will respond to his word through our faith. Consequently, our faith-filled response to his word will keep us in alignment with his will while we supernaturally bear fruit. God declared Noah to be righteous and blameless. Let me ask you, if someone were to write about you, if someone were to write about you in a book, what about God? How, how, how would God describe you at this very moment? How would God describe you? Now, all over this world, there are competitions to break world records, to see who is best at something. But who strives to be the most righteous person alive? Now, certainly, someone can break a record, become the new best athlete, best speller, seller, fighter, even manage to eat the most hot dogs in one sitting. However, who can be the most righteous? I mean, shouldn't that be our goal? Shouldn't that be our heart's desire? Now, Noah was complete and whole because he walked with God. Are you walking with God by the way you freely choose to live your life? Or are you walking away from God? What was the last thing God told you to do? If being righteous means being right with God based off what God has told you to do, are you being faithfully obedient to do what he told you to do? And if you have responded through faithful obedience to what God has told you to do, have you seen fruit come from it? If so, what? If not, do you have faith that God will produce the fruit in his perfect timing? Until next time, may you be right with God and walk with God.